So one day, Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe was expanding, so they named a telescope after him. Well, yeah, there's more to the story. Now, imagine a fruitcake baking in the oven. As this cake is rising, the raisins inside are moving farther apart. Something similar happens when the universe expands. But instead of raisins, there are galaxies, which start to spread out. That's why if you randomly pick any two galaxies, the chances are they're moving away from each other. But then the question is, if galaxies are moving apart, why are there still galactic collisions? You see, even while expanding, the universe still remains a playground for galaxies to interact with one another. And they mostly do it by using gravity. All galaxies out there attract other galaxies, and their mutual pull slows down the speed of them moving apart. And naturally, the closer two galaxies are to each other, the stronger their mutual gravitational pull is. On a large scale, it doesn't seem to make any difference, since every galaxy experiences a similar pull in every direction. But locally, gravity kind of overwhelms this powerful cosmic expansion and pulls together two or more galaxies which were initially moving apart. That's how galaxy collisions occur. Plus, some galaxy groups, like the Virgo cluster, aren't expanding at the moment, since local gravity has stopped the expansion process in that region. Some large galaxies can attract smaller ones, and then the gravity of the larger galaxy starts pulling a smaller one toward it. Eventually, it leads to a collision. Galaxies are made up of stars, rock, dust, gas, and other materials. When two galaxies collide, their gases begin to interact. These gases usually exist in large clouds spread throughout galaxy systems. Because of their size, large clouds of gases are more likely to run into large clouds of gases. Then they start getting denser and experience more pressure. Or the combination of gases can cause waves, and the gases can collapse on themselves. Both of these processes lead to the formation of new stars. If two colliding galaxies are of the same size, many new stars are likely to form, making the galaxies shine even brighter. But if the speed of these two galaxies is too high, the newly formed stars can go right out after they appear in the sky. As two galaxies start coming closer to each other, they begin to stretch and deform, creating arms or tails. As a result, an elliptical galaxy can form. Or the collision can form a new supergalaxy. In this case, stars from each galaxy will have to find a new place within this gigantic space formation. But of course, there are tons of galaxies that have never collided with others. That's because galaxies are actually relatively small targets in our gigantic universe. They form groups of small clusters where dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of galaxies gather together. Gravity holds them tight together, just like the solar system stays together thanks to the sun's gravity. Galaxies roam within these groups and clusters in a disorganized way. Naturally, collisions are bound to occur. But since galaxies are tiny, compared to all that space they live in, massive mergers don't happen often. I'm talking about those collisions between equal size galaxies that shake things up on a grand scale. Of all the environments galaxies can live in, the most dangerous place is a group. Because solitary galaxies, living out in the field, seldom cross paths with others. As for galaxy clusters, they are indeed crowded. But galaxies in them move at such breakneck speeds that even if two of them meet, they'll simply race past each other without any dramatic consequences. But groups of galaxies are a different story. There, galaxies move comparatively unhurriedly. It makes it more likely that two galaxies in a group will not only come close to each other, but also get caught in their mutual gravitational pull for a prolonged time. And what will happen if two galaxies come close enough to collide? Well, the best way you can imagine such events is by thinking of them as merges rather than collisions. Galaxies are very spacious, and it's more likely that the stars they contain will just pass by each other. Let's talk about a galactic collision that, according to astronomers, is going to happen in several billion years or so. And our home Milky Way galaxy is going to take part in this space event. But don't worry, we still have some time to brace for the impact. 
Interestingly, there might be not one, but two collisions. And the first one might happen around, oh, 2 billion years from now, when the Milky Way will collide with the large Magellanic Cloud. This spiral of stars and dust is floating in space about 160,000 light years away from our galaxy. And although right now, this distance is totally safe and you have nothing to worry about, in approximately 2 billion years, the two celestial bodies are likely to collide. And what a view it's going to be! Imagine the Milky Way nearing the smaller galaxy. The supermassive black hole residing in the center of our galaxy will wake up and start gobbling up the stars and gas clouds of the large Magellanic Cloud with enthusiasm. Thanks to this new food source, the hole will grow way bigger than it is now. It might even turn into a quasar, one of the brightest things you can find in the universe. Our newly awakened black hole will also be emitting long jets of superbright radiation. But people on Earth won't have anything to worry about. These jets won't reach our solar system. And even if powerful gravitational interactions triggered by the merger could probably fling us out into intergalactic space, the chances of this happening are slim. Like me winning the lottery. <laughs> Stars are located too far away from one another, and even such a catastrophic galactic smash-up isn't likely to jostle our solar system. Now, if our black hole does turn into a quasar, it'll be an even more breathtaking view. The thing about these celestial bodies is that their light can be up to 10,000 times brighter than the light coming from the whole Milky Way galaxy. That's why Earth's night sky might change beyond recognition. The newly born quasar will get rid of some stars and send others flying billions of miles away from their orbits. As a result, all the constellations as we know them will disappear from the sky after the familiar stars get too far away for us to see them with the unaided eye. Luckily, the chances that the Sun will get knocked out of the Milky Way are really infinitesimal. But how about the predicted collision with the Andromeda Galaxy? Will our solar system survive this catastrophe as well? Right now, the Andromeda galaxy is nearing the Milky Way at a speed of 68 miles per second. As you may guess, it's very hard to figure out its actual speed. And until 2012, researchers weren't even sure if the collision was going to happen or not. Unfortunately, it turned out that we had to prepare for the appearance of Milkdromeda or Milkamida a structurally new galaxy consisting of the merged Andromeda and the Milky Way. Now, on the other hand, such collisions aren't something out of the ordinary if you consider galaxies' lifespans. Besides, even though the Milky Way is home to more than 100 billion stars and the Andromeda galaxy contains about a trillion, the chances of several stars colliding during the galaxy's merge is really low. The reason is the same – stars are located too far away from one another. For instance, the closest to our Sun star, Proxima Centauri, is more than 4.2 light-years away, which is about 30 million diameters of our Sun. In simpler terms, if the Sun was the size of a ping-pong ball, Proxima Centauri would be the size of a pea located 680 miles away and the entire Milky Way would be 19 million miles wide. Wow! As for other stars, can you imagine ping-pong balls hanging in space every two miles? Great! Now you have a miniature model of our galaxy.